Question two starts out very similar to question one. We have a force sensor where we can uh, program the forces and the times. We have a disc sliding along a section with no friction and then into a rough section. So we have two different trials where um, different amounts of force for a certain amount of time as shown in the graphs. Question A says, in which of the two trials, if either, is the change in energy of the disk the greatest during the interval? So we have a um, little different question for than last time. Before we had the force uh, times the time, force versus time graph, excuse me. This time we have a force versus position graph. So let's ask ourselves, what is this going to tell us? This can tell us, well, the slope of a force graph doesn't really do much for us, but the area of a force versus position graph can give us, right, force times a distance is, can give us work, right? Now, luckily for us, the question A says, in which of the two trials is the change in energy greater? So this graph is going to help us answer this question because if you do work on something, you can change its energy. So let's figure out the amount of work for each of these two trials. So uh, during the interval shown, only, work is only done when the force is not zero. For, so for in trial one, we have 1.5 newtons times 0.3 meters for amount of work of 0 0.45 joules, okay? Um, for the work for number two, it's more work but for less time. So we have three newtons times 0.2 meters giving us 0 0.60 joules. So more work is done in trial two, so that means the change in energy is greater. So three points for part A, one for saying the second graph has the greatest area, one for saying that the area indicates the work done, and one for saying that more work equals more change in energy. Or you could make an argument about acceleration, determining the acceleration from the force, and then apply kinematics formulas to get those three points as well. So I guess you could divide out the known mass of the object um, out of the force and then give, get an acceleration over a position. And so then in our graph, we'd have, you know, we'd know the acceleration and we'd know the delta x. So what, what would we be solving for there? I guess we'd be solving for a VF and then trying to figure out their kinetic energy. So again, they don't ask us well, actually, they do ask us which has which has a higher value. So I think that the work under the graph area under the graph is the best way to go for that one. Um, if you went another way and want to discuss it, let me know. Let's talk about part B. In both trials, the disc comes to rest in the rough section. In which trial, if either, does the disc travel a shorter distance in the rough section, and why? Well, remember, we're in the no friction section. And then we're in the friction section here. When we get here, we've got a certain amount of energy here, right? And let's be specific, it's kinetic energy, okay? So here, we're going to have work is going to stop the disk, okay? Work is going to stop the disk. Now, the disks are of equal mass. Um, so when we have the frictional force here times the distance, we have mu k times mg times the distance. So the question is, will either of these guys have more energy at the end of this? And, and we decided in part A that trial two has more energy. So with more energy, the frictional force is the same. It's going to have to apply that frictional force for a longer distance. So two points for part, for part B. One saying that friction is the same regardless because the mass is the same and then one point for saying that the disc with the smaller launch speed will go a shorter distance and that was the question which disc travels a shorter distance so the disc with a lower launch speed all right on to part c the students repeat trial two with a disc that's made from the same material but less massive okay so we have uh, the same constant force exerted on the less massive disc would the distance traveled be less than, more than, or the same? All right.
Okay, so to answer part C, I kind of had a little bit of a roundabout reasoning here, but let me tell you what I was thinking. Um, our disk, our mass is less, okay, but we have our FD, our work is the same, right? So the new work equals the old work to get it started, right? Which means the new energy is going to be the same as the old energy. Now, since the new mass is less, our new velocity is going to be larger, right, than the old velocity. Okay, but that doesn't necessarily make any difference because what we have here is the old energy is equal to the new energy. So now to slow it down, right, we have our new energy, which is the same. We've got our new frictional force and we've got our new distance. Well, since the new, the new, excuse me, the new disc is less heavy, right, and FK equals mu K times mg, this is going to go down. So in order to keep the energy change the same, if the frictional force is going to be less, then the distance is going to have to be greater. So my answer is greater. Now, the rubric I don't really understand. They say there's three points here, but as far as I'm concerned, one of them is incorrect. Here's what it says. It says one point for the less massive disk having a greater launch speed. Okay, well, we, that's, I'm okay with that. Um, one point for saying that the less massive disk travels further, which I also agree with. Here's the statement I don't like. It says one point is earned for indicating that the distance traveled in the rough section for a given speed does not depend on the mass of the disk. And I think that's just a weird way of saying that in the old way, we had one half, and let's just call that a big M, V squared, right? And that was equal to a certain energy and that was equal to a certain friction force times a distance but then for the new we have a one half little mv squared equals the same energy which equals the frictional force times the distance i just feel like that second statement i don't know that we're going to come up with because we weren't really we weren't really comparing equal speeds we were comparing equal other things so if you got the answer that the lighter disc would go further, give yourself that point. If you made the point that even though it has a, a higher speed, it had the same energy, give yourself another point. So uh, be generous with the points there. It was one of those that I didn't like the way they graded it, but I still liked the question. So I'm gonna move on to part D. Uh, if you'd like to discuss that further, I'm happy to do that with you. All right, but I'm gonna just move on right now. Uh, students derive the following equation to describe the distance D traveled by the original disk in trial two on the rough section. So F, X over mu, M, G. Now keep in mind X is the distance that the, the force is applied. And D is stopping distance. Okay, so they say, um, indicate whether this is consistent with what I said in part B. Okay, so you know this drill. What did I say in part B? What I said in part B was, if I decrease the mass, I will increase the distance. That's what I said. Is that part B? Part is that? Okay. Uh, and here's my reasoning. Um, first of all, it is consistent here because if I decrease the mass, that's going to increase the fraction. If I increase the, right, that's because it's in the denominator. If I increase the distance, that also increases, oh, I'm sorry, this distance is on the other side since D is over there. So, apologize. Since mass is in the denominator, decreasing that increases the fraction. So that's a yes. Uh, the rubric says one answer, uh, one point for saying that an answer that's consistent with B. So that was my, what I said in part B, and it was consistent. Now, if you said something wrong in part B, but you were consistent here, again, you can get that point. One point for saying that since F times X is greater in trial two, D is greater. Okay, so two points for that one. All right, and this problem never ends. 
Uh, a student measures the time t that the disk is in contact with the force sensor in trial two. The dis disk then travels a distance d along the rough section. The student claims that if the same force is exerted for a time 2t, the disk would travel a distance 2d. Is that claim correct? All right. So here's my answer. A disk pushed with the same force, okay, with the same force for a time 2t would have double the impulse, right? Because F delta t equals j. If we double the time, right, then we get 2j, right? Now, remember the impulse changes the momentum, right? Impulse equals m delta v, right? So that means we're gonna have a double launch speed, okay? However, what determines how long it takes to stop is not the momentum, but the kinetic energy, one half mv squared. So my new kinetic energy, right, if my new velocity is double, my new kinetic energy is 1 times 1 times 2 squared, which is 4 times the old kinetic energy, which means I need 4 times the old work. So three points for part E, one for saying that twice the time leads to twice the launch speed, one for application of work energy, and one for saying that the stopping distance is proportional to the energy, not the speed. So times four, that's part E. Just one more, part F. Here's our equation, D equals C, F squared, T squared, two mu M squared G. Right, this is the relationship between the time that it's pushed and the distance in the rough section. Does this is this consistent with my statement in part E, All right? What I said in part E is that ta doubling time would equal D by four, all right? So I look at my formula here and I can, I can literally do factor of change here. My new D is equal to one for the, for the C, big C. The four stayed the same, my time squared, the two, the mu, the M squared, the G, all of that's one. So four times the distance. So it is consistent. So one for consistent or inconsistent, as long as you address the functionality, and then one for indicating that the distance is proportional to the square of the time. That's it for that one.